The September massacres were a wave of killings in Paris and other cities from 2 to 7 September 1792, during the French Revolution. There was a fear that foreign and royalist armies would attack Paris and that the inmates of the city's prisons would be freed and join them. Radicals called for preemptive action. The action was undertaken by mobs of National Guardsmen and some fédérés, it was tolerated by the city government, the Paris Commune, which called on other cities to follow suit. By 6 September, half the prison population of Paris had been summarily executed, some 1,300 to 1,400 prisoners. Of these, 233 were nonjuring Catholic priests who refused to submit to the civil constitution of the clergy. However, the great majority of those killed were common criminals. The massacres were repeated in many other French cities, no one was prosecuted for the killings, but the political repercussions first injured the Girondists who seemed too moderate and later the Jacobins who seemed too bloodthirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Background The political situation in Paris on the eve of the September massacres was highly excited and aroused by dreadful rumors of traitors and foreign invaders. On the evening of the 9th of August 1792, a Jacobin insurrection overthrew the leadership of the Paris Commune headed by Jérôme Pechin de Villeneuve and proclaimed a new revolutionary commune headed by transitional authorities. The next day, the insurrectionists stormed the Tuileries Palace. King Louis XVI fled with the royal family, and his authority as king was suspended by the Legislative Assembly. A de facto executive was named, but the actual power of decision making rested with the new revolutionary commune, whose strength resided in the mobilized sans culottes, the vast majority of Paris's fairly poor population. The 48 sections of Paris were fully equipped with munitions from the plundered arsenals in the days before the assault, substituting for the 60 National Guard battalions. Now, supported by a new armed force, the Commune and its sans culottes took control of the city and dominated the Legislative Assembly and its decisions. For some weeks, the Commune functioned as the actual government of France. The Commune took major steps towards democratizing the revolution, the adoption of universal suffrage, the arming of the civilian population, absolute abolition of all remnants of noble privileges, the selling of the properties of the emigres. These events meant a change of direction from the political and constitutional perspective of the Girondists to a more social approach given by the Commune. As Cambon declared on 27 August, To reject with more efficacy the defenders of despotism, we have to address the fortunes of the poor, we have to associate the revolution with this multitude that possesses nothing, we have to convert the people to the cause. Besides these measures, the Commune engaged in a policy of political repression of all suspected counter-revolutionary activities. Beginning on the 11th of August, every Paris section named its Committee of Vigilance. Mostly these decentralized committees, rather than the Commune, brought about the repression of August and September 1792. From 15 to 25 August, around 500 detentions were registered. Half the detentions were made against non-juring priests, but even priests who had sworn the required oath were caught in the wave. In Paris, all monasteries were closed and the rest of the religious orders were dissolved by the law of 15 August. <inaudible> <inaudible> invasion by the Duke of Brunswick On 2 September, news reached Paris that the Duke of Brunswick's Prussian army had invaded France the 19th of August, and had captured the key fortress of Verdun. He was advancing quickly toward the capital. On 25 July, Brunswick had issued the Brunswick Manifesto. His avowed aim was to put an end to the anarchy in the interior of France, to check the attacks upon the throne and the altar, to re-establish the legal power, to restore to the king the security and the liberty of which he is now deprived and to place him in a position to exercise once more the legitimate authority which belongs to him. Additionally, the manifesto threatened the French population with instant punishment should it resist the imperial and Prussian armies, or the reinstatement of the monarchy. Such threats fueled this first wave of mob hysteria of the revolution. By the end of August, rumors circulated that many in Paris, such as non-juring priests, who opposed the revolution, would support the first coalition of foreign powers allied against it. According to Danton and Robespierre, those royalists who had spoken about support to the enemy or capitulation had to be locked up. Furthermore, Paris lacked extensive food stocks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Reports of massacres. When news that Brunswick had captured Verdun reached the Commune in the morning, they ordered the alarm guns fired and the gates closed, which escalated the sense of panic. In the afternoon an army of 60,000 was to be enlisted at the Champ de Mars by Danton. Jean-Paul Merritt advised the volunteers not to leave the capital without first having their enemies punished. He announced that a new bloodletting should take place, larger than the one on 10 August. The British ambassador reported, a party at the instigation of someone or other declared they would not quit Paris, as long as the prisons were filled with traitors for they called those so, that were confined in the different prisons and churches, who might in the absence of such a number of citizens rise and not only affect the release of His Majesty, but make an entire counter-revolution. The first instance of massacre occurred when 24 non-juring priests were being transported to the prison of the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, which had become a national prison of the revolutionary government. The six carriages, escorted by Federes, were attacked on the street by a mob. They quickly killed 19 of them as they were trying to escape into the prison, then mutilated the bodies, with circumstances of barbarity too shocking to describe, according to the British diplomatic dispatch. During the next hours, a tribunal was compiled by Stanislas Marie Mellard, 135 inmates were killed, 27 were transferred, 86 were set free, and 36 had uncertain fates. In the late afternoon of 2 September 116 priests in the former convent of Carmelites Carms prison, detained with the message they would be deported to French Guiana, were massacred, mostly by sans-culottes. From 2 to 7 September, summary trials took place in all nine Paris prisons. The pattern of semi-formal executions followed by the popular tribunals was for condemned prisoners to be ordered, transferred, or even, released and then taken into the prison courtyards where they would be cut down by waiting sans culottes. Restif de la Bretonne saw the bodies piled high on pont au change in front of the Châtelet. The witnessed atrocities he recorded in Les Nuits de Paris 1793, on 3 and 4 September, groups broke into other Paris prisons, as the Conciergerie, the La Force Prison, Salpêtrière for men and boys, saint Pelagie, Tour Saint-Bernard, the Seminary Saint-Fermin, and Bicetra for women on 6 September. <laughs> Numbers According to Albert Sobul there were about 2,800 prisoners in early September. Around 1,300 prisoners were condemned and executed, in truth half the detained persons from the previous weeks. Among the victims were more than 250 priests, almost 100 Swiss guards, many political prisoners and 30 aristocrats, including the Queen's friend, the Princess de Lamballe, locked up in La Petite Force. About 1,500 prisoners brought before the people's courts were returned to their cells or in a few cases acclaimed as patriots, released, and escorted to their homes. A total of nine prisons were violently entered during the five days of the massacres before the killings concluded on the night of 6 to 7 September. After initially indiscriminate slayings, ad hoc popular tribunals were set up to distinguish between enemies of the people and those who were innocent, or at least were not perceived as counter-revolutionary threats. In spite of this attempted sifting an estimated three-quarter of the 1,300-1,400 killed were no counter-revolutionaries or villains, but forgers of assignats, mentally ills, 35 prostitutes, women, and 43 children. In Paris in the Terror, Stanley Loomis reports that during the massacre at the prison of Bicetra, 33 boys aged between 12 and 14 were murdered. Loomis also reported that, "...girls as young as ten were murdered when the mob subsequently attacked the Salpêtrière Institution for Women, mentally insane and prostitutes, but he did not report how many victims there were." <laughs> <laughs> Killings outside Paris On 3 September a circular letter had been sent to regional authorities by Talion, member of the newly created Paris Commune advising that, "...ferocious conspirators detained in the prisons had been put to death by the people," and urging that, "...the entire nation will hasten to adopt this necessary measure." Smaller scale executions took place in Meaux, Reims, and Lyon, in imitation of the major massacres. 
There were 75 separate incidents in 32 of the 83 departments. Most notable of these was the killing of 44 political prisoners near Château de Versailles on 9 September. Official role Between 17 August and the prison massacres in early September, more than a thousand people were taken into custody on the flimsiest warrants. On 27 August a betrayal of Louis Capet was discovered, a plot to murder, on the night of 2 to 3 of this month, all the good citizens of the capital, by the aristocrats and the refractory priests, to help brigands and scoundrels, detained in the prisons of Paris. On 28 August, on the behest of Danton, domiciliary visits were authorized in search of firearms. On 30 August a demand was made for the dissolution of the commune and replacement by a successor to be promptly elected. The assembly backed down two days later. On Sunday 2 September the French National Convention election, 1792 started. Robespierre had accused Brissot and the Brissidens publicly of plotting with Duke of Brunswick. Merritt left nothing in doubt when he urged good citizens to go to the Abbey, to seize priests, and especially the officers of the Swiss Guards and their accomplices and run a sword through them." According to Timothy Tackett, "...for a period of some 48 hours between 29 and 31 August the whole of Paris was systematically searched by the National Guard for lurking conspirators and hidden arms. By that time section assemblies were already passing motions demanding the death of conspirators before the departure of citizens. Madame de Stael, who tried to escape Paris, was forced by the crowd to go to the town hall. She noted that Robespierre seated that day, assisted by Collet d'Herbois and Biot Varenne, according to Madame de Stael on 31 August. It was already known, that those only who were destined to be massacred were sent to that prison of the Abbey. According to Adolphe Thiers on Sunday morning 2 September. The keeper of the abbey sent away his and children in the morning. Dinner was served to the prisoners two hours before the accustomed time, and the knives were taken from their plates. Such municipal and central government as existed in Paris in September 1792 was preoccupied with organizing volunteers, supplies, and equipment for the armies on the threatened frontiers. Accordingly, there was no attempt to assuage popular fears that the understaffed and easily accessed prisons were full of royalists who would break out and seize the city when the National Guards and other citizen volunteers had left for the war. The Minister of Justice Danton responded to an appeal for restoring order with the comment, to hell with the prisoners. They must look after themselves. <laughs> Debate in the Convention On 29 October 1792, the convention held an afterthought. Roland accused the Commune of the atrocities. Jean-Baptiste Louvet de Couvray accused Robespierre of creating a personality cult and dictatorship. Robespierre was taken by surprise and had to be defended by Danton. Robespierre was given eight days to reply. On 5 November Robespierre stated that Merritt had visited him only once since January. He asked the convention. Citizens, did you want a revolution without revolution? Robespierre, Danton, and Merritt insisted that the new bloodletting had been a spontaneous popular movement. Their opponents, the Girondins, spoke of a systematically planned conspiracy. Louvet was no longer admitted to the Jacobin Club. <laughs> Martyrs A group of 115 churchmen killed during the massacres was beatified by Pope Pius XI on 17 October 1926. Among the martyrs were Pierre-Louis de la Rochefoucauld, Bishop of Saintes, Jean-Marie du Lau Delman, Archbishop of Arles, François-Joseph de la Rochefoucauld, Bishop of Beauvais, and Amboise Chevreux, the last superior general of the monastic congregation of Saint Maur. See also The Legislative Assembly and the Fall of the French Monarchy List of massacres in France Notes and citations
Topic: <inaudible> Bibliography. Toulard, Jean, Fayard, Jean-François, Fierro, Alfred 1998. Histoire et dictionnaire de la Révolution française in French. Robert Lafont. ISBN 2-221-08850-6. Loomis, Stanley Paris in the Terror. New York, Dorset Press. ISBN 0-88029-401-9. Further reading Hibbert, Christopher, The Days of the French Revolution, William Morrow, New York, 1980. Shama, Simon, Citizens, A Chronicle of the French Revolution 1992 pp. 629–39 Scott, Samuel F. and Barry Rothaus, eds. Historical Dictionary of the French Revolution 1789–1799 Vol. 2 pp. 891–97 online Tackett, Timothy 2011. Rumor and Revolution, The Case of the September Massacres. French History and Civilization Vol. 4, pp. 54–64. <laughs> Fictional accounts Dickens, Charles, A Tale of Two Cities Henty, George Alfred, In the Reign of Terror. Neville, Catherine, The Eight External links The September Massacres, 2–7 Sept. 1792 archived link. The September Massacres witnessed by Restif de la Bretonne The September Massacres witnessed by Earl Gower, a British diplomat Thomas Carlyle on the September Massacres <laughs>